What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be getting into sky replacements, but this time we're gonna be using the fast easy way with Photoshop. Even though it's awesome, there's still a few things that stood out to me that if you didn't know how to do this before, you might be making some rookie errors that make your set of photos look really, really weird and obviously fake. So I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to make your AI sky replacements look more nice and natural and realistic. So thanks for joining, now let's get into it. So for real estate specifically, uh, it's pretty much the industry standard that you're gonna have blue skies edited into your photos, no matter what, <laughs> unless it's sunset. Uh, so here's how it works in general. Okay, so all you do is click edit sky replacement and here's the sky library that you can choose from, bam. It's got all these blue skies in there that you can choose from. And let's go with this one. So yeah, you can use theirs, you can import your own. I have a whole set of them that I imported that I like. Um, these are great too though. There you go, right away. So like with zero experience, I mean, you could have a pretty good looking sky replacement. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Okay, so the number one thing that I would do always for every single photo replacement, whether it's one photo, whether it's a whole set of photos, you're gonna want to change your brightness, okay, to where it matches the photo. So I usually like my sky to be a little bit brighter than like the house or whatever the main subject is because that's how it is in nature. That's how it looks. If you look outside your house, usually the sky is a little bit brighter than everything else. So I'm just gonna change my brightness a little bit, about like that to where it's almost clipping, a little almost overexposed, but not quite. Okay. So before and after in just a few clicks. Pretty stinking awesome, right? <laughs> Make sure that in a whole set of photos, you're not leaving the sky and the clouds all in the same spot. I've seen that so many times on real estate listings where you go from image to image to image to image and the sky doesn't move, but the house and everything else moves. And it's just like, okay, obviously this is fake. And then you start wondering what else in these photos is actually fake. And so it just kind of disconnects you from viewing the set of images. <laughs> So one way you can use the same sky, but change it enough to where it looks like it's right is you gotta think, here's the house, here's the sky behind it. So whenever you're right here taking a photo, you'll be catching this part of the sky. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in on my computer to make the sky bigger and scoot it over a little bit to get that part of the sky in the photo. Same thing when you're straight on, I'll just have it straight on behind the house right there. So you're catching this part of the sky in the photo. And then when you're over here, shooting towards this part of the house, you'll be getting this part of the photo. So I'll scoot that over a little bit too. So that way it looks like you literally just moved and caught the different parts of the sky in different angles of photos. Obviously you could use different skies that are kind of similar, but that way it looks a little bit more like it's the actual sky that was there because it's in the different photos, but in context to where it would be in real life. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> the next biggest tip is to make sure that there is some atmosphere. So I got a BFA and did painting and sculpting primarily. So in painting, you learn about perspective, you learn about atmosphere, you learn about haze, all these different things. So basically the further away the sky is from you, it starts to develop some atmosphere that you see. So that's why the further away it is, the more kind of bright or hazy it gets. So to make it look like that on sky replacements, I actually just add a gradient at the bottom to where it's built in there ready to go. All right, so if you get my skies, 
you can just click this, control A, open, and that's how you import them. Pretty easy. I mean, you could just literally go outside and shoot a bunch of skies in your area. One tip is like a parking garage is great because you're like above everything. So you can go in a parking garage, shoot the sky at a bunch of different angles. Or if you could use a drone, just have it a little bit higher than the tree line and shoot in a bunch of different angles. Uh, that helps with your atmospheric perspective a little bit. So I've got drone ones, I've got normal ones. Uh, I really like maybe this one. Yeah, see, so like the further away it is closer to the horizon line, it looks more hazy, which helps make it look more realistic. That's kind of a weird placement. So, especially in context of using these sky replacements All right, I'm gonna go with that one. So especially in context with shooting in cloudy days where you have no harsh lighting and harsh shadows and stuff like that, it looks a lot more natural to have a sky with some clouds. So let's go ahead and brighten that up a little bit. Okay, and I don't honestly don't really like this foreground color stuff that it does because it makes it look more like green tinted um maybe if you're like adding a sunset that's more beneficial because it makes it a little bit more like magenta or orange or something but so i'm just gonna delete that layer don't really need that nice brightness looks good so before and after and just a few clicks <laughs> Okay, now let's do one more, let's do a dusk one. Okay, this is probably one of my favorite dusk ones from the shoot, so let's go ahead and add that. So we're just going edit, sky replacement. Surprised they didn't make a little shortcut. Uh, <laughs> so we got a daytime sky, that looks weird. Okay, let's go sunsets. Here's some of mine. Let's do this one, this is a drone sunset maybe. Where's the one I used? I think this is the one I used for the actual edits. Nice. Yeah, I like that one. This is a drone. So this is a drone shot, but it's it's really great for for these because you don't have like trees in it, but you still get that atmosphere. Okay, so let's go ahead and make it a little bit brighter. You can change the temperature, a little bit more sunsetty, And so I like that one because it just kind of adds to the composition. The blue adds a little bit of color contrast to these orange lights. And it keeps it all pretty bright and interesting without being too like Halloween-y looking. <laughs> um, and a little trick for shooting these, this was about like it was overcast, so we actually got them a little bit before my iPhone said that it was supposed to be sunset. But you can usually count on it being like five to 15 minutes after your phone weather app says the sunset is supposed to be. To get some nice glowy windows, but still have a little bit of daylight on the house, so it looks nice. Okay, so just a few tips, but they really make a huge difference on whether or not it passes as a real sky or doesn't pass as a real sky. <laughs> I'm super impressed on how easy it is to do this and how good it does at edge detection and honestly just everything that they're doing with Photoshop with that artificial intelligence is crazy. Um, I've used Luminar and it works basically the same way but since I already use Photoshop and I'm used to it, it's a lot easier for me to not go from one program to another program to another program and slow down my workflow and make it a little bit more complicated. Let me know what questions you guys have. If you want my sky replacement pack, uh, just check the link in description for my store. It's like 20-ish ones that I use all the time for drones, for normal shots, for sunsets. So hope this video was helpful. Let me know what questions you guys have in the comments and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.